Welcome to another edition of At Home with RBC, featuring Master Sommelier, Andrea Robinson. Hey everybody, it's Andrea Robinson, Master Sommelier and very proud partner of RBC, here with a 10-minute power lesson on wine that I call the 10-minute wine whiz. Now, as a master sommelier, wine is my work, but it's also my passion. So much so that I actually left a Wall Street finance career to go to France, work a harvest, and then come back and follow my heart into the world of wine as a profession. But that's a story for another time, because right now, in less than the amount of time that it takes for a coffee break, I'm going to teach you the basics that'll get you through all of your wine life. So we're going to learn how to taste like a pro because to know wine is to taste it. That's the only way to learn. And we're also going to learn the key grapes to know as well as the label lowdown of what the label can tell you about the taste of the wine inside before you even buy it. So you ready? Well, let's get started with the five S's of tasting. Now, every step starts with the letter S and it's really important to get the most out of the wine. So it's C, Swirl, smell, sip, and savor. And now let's break it down. All right, first of all, C. Of course, you're gonna look at the wine and that's why you need a great wine glass. And you're going to be able to see the color, red, white, or rosé, but you can see more than that because the darker the color, the fuller the body. So for a red wine, if it's a pale ruby versus a dark inky purple, well, you'll be able to know the body differences. That dark purple is probably gonna be fuller. Same with white wine, a straw gold wine will be a lot lighter in body most of the time versus a golden butterscotch yellow, all right? So that's C. Now the next step is swirl, and this is really important. Now you can also do the, the baby steps version here or in the air, and you're not trying to look like a snob at a cocktail party, right? What you're doing is you're aerating the wine because that's really critical to get to the next step, which is smell. When you aerate the wine, all of those aromas collect in the headspace of the glass so that your nose can appreciate them on step number three, which is smell. And this is not one to rush. Smell is so critical. The reason for that is that flavor comes from the sense of smell, right? Your tongue can only taste five things, sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and umami, the fifth taste, which means yumminess, right? But flavor comes from smell. So whether it's a berry flavored Cabernet Sauvignon or buttery Chardonnay, well, berry and butter come from the sense of smell. So smelling's really important and it's also fun. The next step is sip. I know, I've kept you waiting. Now's the time. When you sip the wine, cover all parts of your palate and I'll tell you why. As you do so, you let the wine coat your palate. You're gonna get the texture, satiny Pinot Noir, velvety Cabernet Sauvignon. Just like food textures, wine textures are really exciting. You're also getting that mouth-watering acidity that's such a hallmark of wine and makes it the best beverage in the world to pair with food. Just ask us sommeliers. But when you cover all parts of your palate, you're smelling it again because the heat of your mouth sends those aromas to your olfactory sense. So all the flavor cues like dark berry flavored Cabernet Sauvignon or buttery Chardonnay can come out. That's why the sipping part and covering all parts of your palate is so important. Now, lastly, it's of course savor. And savor just means you're enjoying the finish or the aftertaste because a great quality wine has an aftertaste or a finish as they call it in wine speak and it's fun to experience the wine for two seconds, five seconds, 25 seconds. The better quality the wine, the longer the finish. All right, so that's the five S's of tasting. Now let's talk about the grapes that you need to know. There are just three whites and three reds that I call the big six. There are thousands of grapes out there, but these six are the ones to get you started. It's just three whites and three reds that if you know them and their body style and taste profile, you will have a great roadmap to navigate most restaurants and wine shops, right? Okay, so our three whites are Riesling, and here you go, Riesling. And it's not Riesling, but don't worry, the wine police won't get you if you say it wrong, but just remember you have to smile when you say it. I always do, because I love Riesling. That's the light-bodied one. 
Then we have Sauvignon Blanc, medium bodied, a little bit more pungent, very citrusy. And then finally, everybody's favorite white grape, the number one white grape in the world, Chardonnay, okay? So Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, light to medium to full. Riesling is floral, Sauvignon Blanc is citrusy, Chardonnay is all over the place, but it's usually pretty darn fruity and lots of tropical characteristics. All right, now our red grapes from the big six, Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon, and finally Syrah or Shiraz as they call it down under mate. All right, and again, light to medium to full body. Now what I mean by that is a sensation of texture or weight or richness on the palate. So if you think about milk, skim milk versus whole milk versus heavy cream, light to medium to full, you get the idea, right? The body style is a real clue to how you're going to pair the wine and also to your taste profile. If you like light and crisp versus heavy and rich and powerful, now you know a little bit more about what to expect. All right, so that's the big six grapes. Next, let's talk about the label lowdown. Because when we talk about the grapes, it's one of the most important characteristics of a wine that's gonna drive the taste, right? Cherry flavored Pinot Noir, dark blackberry flavored Cabernet Sauvignon, spicy Shiraz, that comes from the grape variety and that's part of what I call the four V's of the wine label. So they're the grape variety or varietal, they are the vineyard growing region, the place where the grapes are grown. Then it's the vintner, the person who makes the wine and puts their style stamp on it. And finally, the vintage, which is the year the grapes are harvested. Okay, so let's take a look at this one, for example. We've got the first V, Cabernet Sauvignon for the varietal. And then we have the growing region, Napa Valley, right here where I live, and uh, super famous for Cabernet Sauvignon. And then we have the vintner, the winery called Farniente, very famous, and their style stamp is power with elegance, right? Just like shoes, just like cars, every producer has their own particular style aesthetic. So the same grape with a different vintner doesn't always taste exactly the same. And then finally, we have the vintage, the year the grapes were harvested. And I want to tell you a little something about that. Unless you're going to collect wines and store them in a cellar for drinking in the future, don't worry about the vintage. Nowadays, with the advances in farming and technology, there's really very little quality variation from one year to the next for most of the wines that most of us drink every day and even for our special occasions. In fact, my favorite wine style, French Champagne, they don't even use a vintage on most of the wines because they blend them for consistency. So, no vintage on Champagne, no problem. And when it comes to vintage for most wines that you're gonna buy, you don't have to worry about it. Now, another V, let's talk about the vineyard region. Well, this is a really big deal because the climate in the vineyard region will drive the style of the wine. Cooler climate wines will be lighter in body, warmer climate, hotter, sunnier, will be fuller in body. That's because the riper the grapes, the bigger, the heftier, the fuller bodied the wine. So we talked about Chardonnay before. This Chardonnay, for example, grown in Napa Valley in the Carneros region, gets a lot of sun, so you're gonna get a lot of ripe tropical fruit flavors. But Chardonnay growing in a place like the Chablis region in the Burgundy section of France is a cool climate. It'll be more crisp, more citrus, more elegant, more delicate. So the climate of the wine region or the vineyard growing region is really critical to the style of the wine. In fact, the vineyard growing region is so crucial to the style of the wine that in some of the classic regions of the world, the famous European ones, the wine is named for the growing region and doesn't even have the grape variety on the label. They have so much experience, centuries, even millennia, of knowing which grape performs well in which climate that they just name the wine for the region where the grapes are grown. So Chablis is a great example. It's Chardonnay, but they don't tell you that on the bottle. So this label only has three of the Vs. It has the vineyard growing region, Chablis, the Vintner, and the Vintage, right? Okay, so that's the four Vs of the wine label and a little lowdown on what they mean and what they can tell you. And that's 10 minutes. So congratulations, you wine whiz. You should go celebrate with a toast. But before you do that, let me thank you so much for having me in your home with RBC, and I'll see you real soon on the wine trail. Cheers. Thank you.